Hi, my name is Mark Maddox, and welcome to this one-week course on missional discipleship, partnering in God's redemptive mission. Uh, I serve as the Dean of the School of Theology and Christian Ministries at Northwest Nazarene University and Professor of Christian Discipleship and Practical Theology. And I welcome you to this uh, one-week course, and I look forward to our journey together as we talk about uh, how we go about the process of developing uh, mission disciples and how we engage in God's redemptive work in the world. I trust that as we go through this week together that uh, this will be a great opportunity for us to engage in dialogue and discussion about how we can do a better job and more effectively serve the church by um, making faithful disciples. So uh, this first lecture uh, is an overview of this week of missional discipleship. It's also taken from the first chapter of uh, a new book that Jay Ackerman and I have just co-edited called Missional Discipleship, Partnering in God's Redemptive Mission. And if you're able to purchase that book along with the class, that would be helpful. If not, uh, I will make those uh, resources available. So uh, I'd like to begin by talking about some uh, broader approaches to uh, discipleship. Uh, most of us, including myself, when we think about discipleship, we think about discipleship in a variety of different ways. Uh, each of these are certainly effective and meaningful approaches to discipleship, but I think in some ways they are limited and do not provide a holistic approach to faithful discipleship. Most of us, when we think of discipleship, we think of education or catechesis, the process by which we uh, transmit the faith to the next generation through education. And this takes place through such things as preaching and Sunday school classes and the office of teaching within the church. And certainly when we think of, of discipleship, um, catechesis or education is a very important part of that. Uh, we also talk about um, spiritual formation as a part of Christian discipleship. As persons are being sh shaped and formed into Christ likeness, as we engage in the means of grace and the practices of prayer, meditation, um, stewardship, acts of mercy and compassion. Certainly this is an important part of, of discipleship. And uh, most people when we talk about discipleship, we talk about it in terms of mentoring, a one-on-one -on -one relationship and investing in someone else. Kind of the Timothy um, um, Paul analogy where Paul provides mentoring to Timothy and to Barnabas. Uh, and certainly that's a, a really important part of discipleship. When we uh, walk alongside someone, spend time with them, share our lives with them, invest in them, that's an important part uh, of discipleship. All of these in themselves are very important and certainly include uh, discipleship, but I think many of them miss a more holistic approach of discipleship that uh, we're going to be talking about during this week. And that is missional engagement or witness. Uh, how are we being shaped and formed as we engage in God's redemptive work in the world? As we engage in mission, as we engage in service? Um, we find that it is through the practice of loving our neighbor, caring for others, focusing on compassion, that we are a witness and through this process of witnessing we are being formed and shaped into faithful disciples. And so I'd like for us to talk uh, a little bit about the relationship between evangelism and discipleship. Uh, again, often when we think about discipleship we think that evangelism is something that happens first and then discipleship is something that follows. And in this uh, a week course I'd like to focus on and think through about uh, discipleship as the entire process of Christian witness. So there's really no difference between what happens before a person becomes to faith and then once they come after faith. The difference is the process, the process of growing and developing as a Christ-like follower. So as a person is beginning to respond to God's grace, at that point as we'll talk a little bit later, the understanding of provenient grace begins this process of discipleship and formation. And so persons are being formed and shaped before they make a decision of faith. And then the discipleship is the whole process 
by which a person is seeking after God, even when they come to faith, they continue to grow in grace, and they become formed and shaped into faithful followers. And so, uh, in many ways, we're looking at the relationship between evangelism and discipleship. I think a more modern approach to evangelism would certainly focus on the event itself and not the process of growth and development. And so missional disciples or missional discipleship is someone who is engaged in God's uh, mission in the world, investing their lives in others and embodying a life of, of love for others. And that's really going to be the focus of this week. That's the things we want to talk about is what does it mean for us to engage in this kind of mission. And so, uh, most of us are aware of the Great Commission. Uh, the mandate is to go and make disciples. Now, the imperative here is not so much on going as it is on making disciples. Uh, making disciples uh, is really what Jesus is calling us to do. And so the question is, how do we do that in a changing culture, in a postmodern context, where discipleship really looks many ways very different than what it did in previous generations. How do we help form and shape persons so they'll be faithful disciples? And how do we help them move from within the context of the church to out into the, into the world to live out the gospel, the gospel, the good news of the gospel in a way that brings about transformation? And so uh, this week we're going to be talking about missional discipleship includes engaging in mission and being in intentional about this process of faithful discipleship. And so I'm really encouraged that many congregations are beginning to refocus uh, how we understand discipleship beyond some of these more traditional forms, which certainly are, are very important and very effective, to begin to embed the gospel through acts of compassion, justice, and mercy, and love for neighbor. And so at the very heart of, of missional discipleship is missional theology. Uh, the very nature and heart of the triune God is mission, missio dei. God is ascending God. God sent his son Jesus Christ to live, to be a witness, to die, and to be resurrected. And then after his death, he sent the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us. And now we have been given the Spirit uh, to partner with God in His redemptive work in the world. So this missional pattern continues through us because God now has sent us into the world. He sends us to partner with Him to restore and to redeem all things. And so if the church's very nature is mission, it's primarily because God's nature is mission. And the nature of the church is seeking and following where God is already active in the world. So as we get into this week, I, I want you to be thinking about, in your own community, in your own ministry context, where is God already active and engaged? Where is God already doing His work, if you will? And how can we find ways to partner in those different er areas of focus and service to the church and to the kingdom? This idea of missio dei, a Wesleyan approach uh, to missional discipleship, I think really gets to the heart of this discussion. And as we think about what it means to live out this missio dei life and this life of missional service and missional discipleship, the nature of God is mission. And so the role of the church, our role in educating and forming, is to form disciples in a way that we engage in practices that usher in the kingdom of God. And as we usher in the kingdom of God, we bring the reign of God here and now. Heaven comes down to earth, and we engage in God's redemptive work in the world. Uh, many of you out there may be very familiar with um, the Wesleyan view of provenient grace, grace that comes before. Um, and we have a very positive view of grace because we recognize that as human persons we're falling but we're not completely uh, depraved. That we have this capacity to respond to God, to respond to God's grace, and to receive grace and to respond to that in responsible kinds of ways. It's kind of a, a, a cooperative or a, or a co-creation that there's this divine human synergism 
where God is acting and we're always responding. And so we believe uh, in our Western tradition that God is active in the world. God is calling all persons to himself. And so God's spirit is everywhere and God is working through us uh, to bring about the redemption of all things. It also means that this understanding of provenient grace is that since God is active in the world, we believe that uh, God is active in those places that may not even be considered to be Christian or sacred. Uh, we recognize that God is active in all things. So when you go to a movie or you uh, go to a play or you um, see a painting, uh, they may not be produced by Christians, but in the midst of those movies or those paintings, we see the beauty of who God is. We understand what's true and what's right um, and what's good because God is present and active. And so we want to break down any separation between that which is sacred and that which is secular. And so in the uh, Missional Discipleship book, I provide this definition as a way for us to begin to think about what is missional discipleship. Missional discipleship represents the missional nature, the missionary nature of the triune God with the purpose of forming congregations to embody the gospel and to equip Christians to participate in the restorative and redemption mission of God in the world. Um, I think to break that down, um, we're going to talk about how this takes place. Uh, first, it starts with this understanding of a triune God whose very nature is mission. But it also means that as we gather as a community around word and table, as we breathe in, God then empowers us as we go out, as we breathe out into the world to live out God's mission and to equip, equip Christians to be able to engage in God's redemptive work uh, in the world. And so, missional disciple is someone who is engaged in God's mission in the world. And we're going to talk a lot about that this week. What does that mean? What does that look like? Uh, it is a journey. It's a process by which we are growing and developing and becoming more like Christ as we embody and live out a life of love, a life of compassion. And so I'd like to talk about um, some missional discipleship practices. And as we begin to, to talk about this, I want to begin by talking about missional discipleship really is less about belief and more about practicing our faith. I came across this uh, term of, uh, several months ago called excarnation. It's the opposite of incarnation. Uh, excarnation is a faith that lives more in the head than it does in the heart. And what that means is, is that instead of being incarnate in the culture, we find ourselves in the culture but not really embodying a particular kind of life, not really engaged in incarnational living. It's more excarnational. And to think about this idea of belonging to a community first before we come to belief and then the behavior. Uh, in a more modern context, it was all about you believe first. You've got to believe in the right things. And then you belong to the community. And then, hopefully, your behavior changes. And so, as being followers of Jesus, we are followers who are on, on the way. We are people of the way. And uh, it's really about following the life, the example of Jesus, more than it is about what we believe. Now, don't misunderstand me. Now, belief and theology is very important. But at the essence of belief and theology is a particular way of life. It's a particular way of living out God's mission. And that really is the heart of missional discipleship. And so, mission begins within it begins within as we the church gathers. And as the church gathers around the practices of the church, word and table, prayer, offering, uh, we receive healing and renewal and we are refreshed and then we are empowered to go out and to engage in God's mission uh, outside in the world. So a missional disciple moves from the inside out. I like this quote by N.T. Wright. If the gospel isn't transforming you, how do you know it will be transforming anything else? I really like that. If the gospel is not transforming us, 
And how do we know there's other kinds of transformation taking place? And so spiritual discipleship, missional discipleship, is how we're being transformed from the inside out. But missional discipleship also includes outside in. So it's not just that we come in and breathe in and then breathe out. It's also that as we engage in service and compassion and mission, that in turn brings about life. Life to us, but life uh, to the community of faith. And so missional disciples and missional discipleship is an attentive and active engagement of embodied love for God and neighbor from the inside out. Discipleship is not only for us, and I think that's really important, but oftentimes we think that disciple is for our own development, our own uh, growth, and that is important, but it's really for the sake of others. We grow and become so that we can then in turn engage in God's mission. And there's a variety of ways we'll do that. We're going to talk about that this week. Many churches are doing this through creation care, food drives, uh, providing counseling. Many churches now have uh, gardens that can be shared in the community. Um, some just serve the community by raking leaves and doing other kinds of things. There's a variety of ways that we can engage in mission. So I want to talk about um, uh, six ways, six practices that I think are essential to missional discipleship. And these will flesh out even more during the week, but I think they're central to our discussion. First is uh, miss missional uh, discipleship includes a missional contextualization, the practice of embodied presence in the community. Christians, we, are to enter into our neighborhoods, our restaurants, our supermarkets, our doctor's offices. And it's there that we meet broken people who need uh, us to journey with them and for us to be an embodiment of the like of Christ as we participate in the reign of God. There's, there's a lot here about theology of place. We often talk about mission as someplace other than where we are. But mission discipleship is about being open to seeing our neighbor and our community as where God has placed us to serve. Some use this term glocal. Uh, what we do locally impacts what we do globally. There's an interconnection between the, the relationship that we have in service to the people around us in our neighborhoods where we work, where we serve, and what God is also doing and how we bring about transformation uh, around the world. The second practice is the redemption of all creation. If we're going to reach our communities with the gospel, we have to show people that we care about the world. And uh, I have that written down twice here because I wanted to emphasize it twice. If we're going to reach our communities, we have to show people that we care about the world. Mark 6.15 says, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole of creation. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. world here is focusing not only on humans, but all that has been created and all that needs to be redeemed and restored. And so we'll talk about how do we engage and participate in ways to bring about redemption of all things. Third, acts of compassion and justice and mercy. Uh, missional discipleship includes being concerned about the injustices of a society, advocating for the poor, the oppressed, and the widow through acts of compassion and acts of mercy. And we'll talk more about that. What does that look like? Uh, how do we engage in these kinds of practices that brings about justice and mercy? Fourth, missional discipleship includes creating places of hospitality, simple acts of hospitality, by inviting people to gather and to engage in service with us. It's being willing to cross borders and to be placed in uncomfortable situations with the marginalized of society. Uh, that, that may mean that we have to go across the tracks, if you will. It may mean that we have to engage in conversation with people from different socio-economical status than ours. It may mean that we need to engage with people who have different political views than us, whether we're 
Republican or Democrat or Green Card or uh, Independent, Libertarian, whatever our, our station in life, we have to create space for hospitality, for openness, for the willingness to engage the other in um, acceptance and love. Uh, if we're going to really reach our neighbor, if we're really going to be missionally engaged through a life of discipleship. And we'll talk more about that uh, throughout this week. Five is what I call cross-perspectival dialogue. It's engaging in dialogue with people from different views and religious ideas, and as I mentioned earlier, political perspectives. It provides opportunities for spiritual conversations of how God is working in the world and God is engaging in their lives. Again, I think sometimes we think that God is only working in the lives of Christians, but God is active in all things. God is working in, in everyone's life in many ways. And so how do we engage in conversations that help them see what it means for them to be disciples? what it means for them to live a life that God may be calling them to live. Uh, David Kinnaman in his new book, uh, you, you Lost Me, uh, says that um, Christians are more famous for what we oppose rather than what we're for. And I think Kinnaman really helps us recognize that one of the reasons that many young adults, and for that matter, adults in general, have a hard time being a part of the Christian communities because for them, they feel like that Christians are more about all these things that we somehow are against instead of the good news of the gospel and what we're for. And so, how do we find ways to engage in these kinds of conversations across different perspectives that's part of being a missional disciple? And the sixth thing is that missional discipleship practices includes freedom from bondage and oppression. The mission of Jesus was to preach the good news to the poor, to free the prisoner, to make blind, make the blind see and to release uh, the captive, those who are oppressed. And here it is from Luke 18, 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has appointed me, anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now obviously Jesus is quoting this from Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, but, but really this is the heart of Jesus' mission, is to bring about redemption and freedom from bondage and oppression to bring the good news to the poor, not to the rich, but to the poor, and freedom to the prisoner, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set people free. Missional discipleship is deeply concerned about ways that we can do that, that we can engage our neighbor and our community in a way that brings about redemption and freedom from bondage and oppression. And so in summary, for this first lecture, a holistic view of discipleship, as we've talked about, includes evangelism as a witness. It's not something that we do first, we evangelize, then we disciple, but we engage in witness, and through that process of growth, uh, people will come to see and to hear the love of Christ through our witness to others. As Christians, as we gather for worship, we are equipped, as we participate in the means of grace, then to engage in God's mission in the world. As we gather around word and table, we breathe in and we breathe out. And then as we breathe out into the world, engage in a mission, then in turn we bring that back into the body to bring about life, to help the, the body be the body of Christ and to engage in God's missional work. And so we recognize that God is active in all things, in all aspects of the world, as our understanding of provenient grace. God is active, calling all persons to Himself. And as we engage in missional practices, we are in the process of restoration and renewal and redemption of all persons 
in all creation. It's really very exciting when we think about what does it mean for us to engage in God's missional work in the world. And I hope this week as we engage in these conversations, we'll find creative ways that we can help others engage in mission. And as they engage in, engage in mission, then in turn, they'll be formed and shaped as faithful disciples, along with the other aspects of discipleship that many of our congregations are a part of. And so, as, again, here's our book. If you uh, would like to pick up a copy of that, you can. You can get a copy uh, online. If you want to follow along, uh, that would be helpful. It's not required for this week, but if you can, uh, that would be recommended. Uh, here's some resources that uh, you can turn to as well as we go out, go through the course, and they may, you may find them be helpful in future reading. And so uh, you have my email. Obviously, it's a part of the class as well, and uh, you're aware of our master's programs, master of divinity, and master of arts programs that you may be may find yourself. Uh, interested in. So there are some discussion questions that are part of this and uh, you will see those discussion questions and um, I would ask you to respond to those this week in our discussion. Thank you and uh, God bless.